morning, everyone, and welcome to Great Day Houston. Thank you very much. Okay, so I want you to take a moment to think about your breakfast this morning. What did you eat? Did it come out of a microwave? Did you um, get it out of a box? I can tell you that my breakfast had zero calories because I didn't eat breakfast, the most important meal of the day. Our first guest is a chef and a doctor, and he wants to help you make better choices without feeling deprived. Dr. Michael Finster is the author of the new book, Food Shaman, The Art of Quantum Food. He's also known as Chef Dr. Mike. So welcome him to the show this morning. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me here, Deborah. I love it. Chef Doctor. Some people might see it as an oxymoron, but really, <laughs> if you look at, you know, it was a Hippocrates who said that, let food be thy medicine. Yes, and I've been called the latter moron many, much... <laughs> <laughs> oh, <no>. Many, many <laughs> times. But if we think about it, uh, really, until the last several decades, really the last century or so, food was such an important part of therapy. Some of the very first cookbooks were actually written by physicians. Ah, okay. So tell us how this happened for you, that you did medical school and actually are a trained chef. Uh, I had a love of food growing up. We moved around a lot, so I'm going to date myself here. Uh, growing up, watching Julia Child and Graham uh, Care, the Galloping Gourmet, for those who, who know. Yeah. And uh, working through college, uh, it was natural for me to get into the food business. My first job was actually as a dishwasher. Worked my way up. Yeah. Uh, back then, nobody wanted to be a chef. There was no such thing as yeah, a celebrity it's chef. Cool now now yeah. it's cool, yeah. but man, then you were in college and all your buddies were getting off uh, and on a Friday night at 5 o'clock and you were working until 2 a.m. coming out smelling like dishwater. Yeah, so, <laughs> but, but you ate well, right? Okay. We always ate yeah. well. <laughs> and so you became a cardiologist, and it's interesting because you know, there's all kinds of studies out there that say you know 75 to 80 percent of heart disease is really in our hands. Of what we can control and directly related to our lifestyle and food. Absolutely, lifestyle, particularly diet. Uh, one study, in fact, quotes exactly the numbers that you just said, about 70%. 70%, let's think about that, 7 out of 10 heart attacks can be prevented. It's literally in our hands. Yeah, okay, so 60% of modern diet consists of ultra-processed foods, and that therein lies part of the problem. It, it does, and uh, it, it really sets up some a lot of the confusion that we get in terms of the direction from medical and health professionals. I got, are you ready for a little challenge. Yeah. I've got my chef Still, or surgeon yes. challenge. So yes. Kind of okay. highlight this point. So okay. folks, you can play along at home as well. So I'm going to describe one of the two foods on the plate okay. and you tell me which one I'm describing. Right, start right over here. We'll start okay. right over here. So contains over 30 additives besides chicken. I would think it's the nuggets because ding, the, ding, yeah, ding, this ding, one right ding, here ding, is looking ding. more like it's in its natural state, <laughs> which is one of the things that we like to do with food is keep it closer to its natural state. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. You're right. That's a uh, pastured uh, chicken right there. So this one actually literally had its origin in pink slime. Oh, I'm going to say maybe the, the burger over there. Burger-like thing, <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, yeah, yeah. But it's funny because <laughs> how many times have we said, oh, no, don't do red meat, don't do red meat. It's not that red meat's the problem. Right, right. And I'll give you the last one here. So we'll go over here. Okay. Which one of these is 49%? not cheese. Oh, I'm going to take a guess and say <laughs> this one right here. <laughs> that is just so wrong. That just doesn't look right. That does not look right. But but here's the deal. If it tastes good, it must be good, though. Well, it gets back to what... <laughs> and this, I'm going to tell you, this cheese whiz tastes good. Right. Well, it, I'm going to get back to what you were saying. So here is this. You just channeled your inner chef. You're thinking like a chef because you see these are not the same. Right. But to your point, when it comes to the medical analysis, we say red meat, red meat is bad. These aren't the same, they can't be the same thing. Yeah. Cheese is bad for you. Yeah, and then the other misconception out there, I know we kind of go back and forth with what's bad for us. Like uh, I remember the 90s when they said, oh my gosh, fat is bad, Ugh. right? So then we started replacing stuff and then we didn't ask the question, what did you replace that with, right? We were taking our, our chips and saying, take the fat out of the chips, take the fat out of this. Yeah. Uh, not looking at the chip itself going, maybe the carbs are what you're getting in trouble with on that one, right? I, and I talk about that and the kind of history of that whole approach, which has kept us, our ship sailing in the wrong direction for now about a half a century. All these edicts that fat doesn't make you fat, it doesn't give you diabetes, and it doesn't give you heart disease. Yeah. Fat's just harder, to, it longer, takes longer to break down, right? Well, your body has to get rid of it. it Fat. Our, our body uh, metabolizes uh, fat. What's important is what we've really learned only in about the last five years yeah. is that it's not just us. We have this thing called the gut microbiome. So you are about 10 trillion human cells. There are 100 trillion bacterial cells, most in your gut. 90% wow. of what makes up you as an organism 
is not you. Yeah. And these little wee beasties, our minions, have <laughs> co-evolved to co-metabolize foods with us. So when we introduce things that are not natural, we poison them. And that starts off this chain reaction of inflammation, obesity, diabetes, heart disease. Yeah. And we find ourselves with the pandemic we have today. Well, we hear this thing called leaky gut, right? Mm -hmm. And, and exactly. is it the same for everybody? Because there are some people who can tolerate certain foods. And then I, there's, there's a difference between tolerate and shouldn't have. Just because you can tolerate certain things doesn't mean that things aren't happening bad in your body. Well, we're just learning, really. It's come to the forefront the last five years or so about the gut microbiome. Some of the gut microbiome, the types of bacteria are genetically derived. Some is where we grow up. A lot has to do with the foods we eat. So what we know is that we can change that. We are in control by what we choose to eat. Do we want to eat real wholesome foods? Which as a chef, I tell you, that's what I want to cook with because yeah. it's delicious. Yeah, and your body recognizes it. Yes, right? as food. So it, you get to have your cake and eat it too. Yeah. Mm, maybe not just all yeah. at once. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, so the book, okay, Food Shaman, The Art of Quantum Food. What is, first of all, what do you mean by shaman? Well, uh, as a physician, I certainly understand, as a cardiologist, food is prescription. Yeah. Food is medicine, as you mentioned, Hippocrates. But I'm a chef. I get, you know, food as pleasure. And a shaman, historically, was someone who would go out into this space between the spaces, the betwixt and the between, and kind of come back with knowledge to help the individual and the community at large. And so that's what I'm doing. Okay. Um, uh, and I get that we need to enjoy the food. And I talk about that in the book because these soft edges, who we eat, what we eat, where we eat, yeah. are very important to health and well-being, too. When it comes to enjoying food, the funny part I find for a lot of people is that we've almost been kind of brainwashed in a way or trained that certain things yeah. are not going to taste good. Yeah. And so we don't give them a chance. <laughs> and then it's funny when you uh, you have something, if you wrap it up in something and then somebody bites into it, oh, this is good. And it's like full, filled with vegetables. <laughs> but I don't like vegetables, but you like this. It's good. Give it a chance, right? And then, you know, we come down to things like even seasoning. There's more to seasoning than just salt. And so yeah. that gives things flavor. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, I call it sort of palate profiling. You know, foods are like people. Don't judge them just because what you heard about them. Give them a chance. Get to know them. Well, okay, I'm going to tell you, we're in a Brussels sprouts renaissance right now. And when I was a kid, I if Brussels I knew, well, yeah, but if I knew that you loved Brussels sprouts as a kid, I would not even play with you because but I hated them so much. I would cheat them at the table and then spit them out in the bathroom. But the reason why is because, I'm sorry, Mom, if you're watching this morning, but she would boil them to death, right? Oh. They're a mushy, bitter mess. Oh, but now yeah. we figured out a pinch of olive oil, a pinch of salt, and you make them crispy. I love me some Brussels sprouts. A, a little sprouts. homemade. A heritage bacon on that. Stop so there the you mad. go. Okay, wait, okay, no, let's go to that. Bacon? What? We can have bacon that has fat and sodium in it. Uh, I craft my own bacon at home from heritage uh, beef, Berkshire pork, uh -huh. raised organically. And I know where that meat was, where it came from, and really all I'm adding is salt. And then I add thyme and juniper yeah. and all these wonderful flavors. And the flavors. key is a little bacon, not the whole slab, right? Yeah, uh, you know, a slice or two of that is so flavor dense. I yeah. mean, you just want to eat it, you savor it, you enjoy it, and it takes you to happy places. Yes. And, and we know that is good for us because depression, right? Yeah. If you deprive yourself of food and you are miserable all the time and depressed, we know that's well, bad for health. Well, there's a direct relation between people who, who can become depressed after eating certain bad foods, right? Well, once I get people on the path of eating really farm-to-table, whole, clean foods, mm -hmm. I find it's a lot like when my patients quit smoking and they say, how did I smoke two packs a day? I can't even go in a room with somebody smoking. Folks eating this way, they come back and they go, how did I ever go through that drive through I smell it now and it makes me ill. Yeah, 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 this, yeah absolutely. I do that too. Uh, okay, so, and there's also a biological connection between food and wah, 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 sex. <laughs> yes, there is. And there's a whole chapter in there. Yes, And okay. I'm going to quote uh, the late, great Tony Bourdain, good food leads to good sex as it should. Yes, <laughs> yes. Okay, so um, chew the fat, food as therapy. Yes, and, and that's about understanding and really it's the art of sorcery. Yeah. Uh, knowing how to source like a chef leads you in a direction where the food not only tastes great, but is great for you. Yeah, okay, now we gotta put it all into action. So yes. we, we know we know the stuff, there's more information out there today than ever before. You've made it very simple for us to understand, but we have to put it into action. Yep. And I think sometimes the reason why people fail is they wanna put things into action all at once. It's okay for us to ease into it. Just do it a meal at a time. Yeah, one, bite, at a time. one bite at a time. Sweet Jesus, that's all I'm asking from you. All right, Chef Dr. Mike's book, Food Shaman, The Art of Quantum Food, is available online. We have a link to that and more on our site, greatdayhouston.com.